Four Japanese islands, at times they seem to split. Their history goes back and forth. At times they would split and at times they would unite. Back and forth between being unified and split up. Unified and split up. Unified and split up. But at this time they united and eventually, um, for a time they actually did open up to the west a little bit. Opened up temporarily, then they expelled the Christians. One of the problems, and to, again, some of the Christians might have bought this on themselves. Um, the Christians insisted that the Japanese should tear up their shrines devoted to their pagan gods. And this offended a lot of the Japanese people. And um, particularly Catholic Christians, the Jesuits, they insisted that converts be loyal to the Pope. And somebody said, well, who's the Pope? We never see him. And uh, besides, we're not only loyal to our emperor. I mean, the Japanese religion, Japanese religion, by the way, is Shintoism. Japanese religion called for strong family ties and strong loyalty to the emperor. Well, the Japanese did not cater to uh, being told we have to be loyal to the Pope. And then when Christians went in and destroyed some of the shrines, this uh, aggravated the Japanese further and led to the Japanese government eventually kicking out all Christians. And leaving one little, one little Dutch port. Now, um, Again, your book considers important the seeds of industrialization, capitalism, uh, which we know seems to be necessary for a group of people to advance and to excel the economically is to develop a capitalistic society and to industrialize. And the, the ideal is the fewer persons you have farming, now there will always be farmers, at least in the foreseeable future, but the lower percentage of people have farming, the better. That means more people are freed up to pursue other callings, other occupations, like uh, automobile building, airplane building, I mean, I'm jumping ahead, I know, but uh, industrialization, which we'll talk about more in the next couple of chapters. Now, as was the case of the Chinese, the Japanese had problems with land finding its way in the hands of a few rich. And the Japanese also began to experience a big population rise, apparently when the climate cooled up, but the Japanese stopped their population growth. Now, they have been extremely effective at this because unlike other cultures, Japanese religion has no qualms and never has had any religious qualms against not only abortion, but infanticide, in other words, waiting until the baby is born and then killing the baby after it's born. Um, they've had no qualms against it. And uh, during this time period we're talking about, they kept the population level. Now, what gets confusing, there were time periods when the population boomed and time periods weren't level, but during this period, everybody listening, they kept the population level by practicing birth control, abortion, infanticide, and any means that they chose. Again, they had no religious qualms against it. Now, I'm going to jump ahead to the 20th century. Wars are always followed by a big baby. I myself am a war baby, born right after, shortly after World War II. My father was a war baby, born right after World War I. People, the men come home from the wars and immediately start having babies, oftentimes naming the babies after fallen relatives who fell in the war, which is a big population boom. Well, now, jump to World War II, and like everybody else that fought in World War II, the Japanese had a population boom, but Japan was the first nation to end it. While the rest of the world, and I'm talking about when I was growing up, they were talking about, we've got to limit our population. Everywhere the Japanese went, they were listened to, because they had no problem with limiting their population, right? We just kill babies we don't want. You know, whether if we kill them before they're born or after they're born, we have no problems about it. So what's happening today in the land of Japan? The Japanese don't change their ways; they're going to become extinct. 
it's been said that the women in Japan are not the least bit interested in marriage, sex, babies, or anything like that. All of them career and careers, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. Now, I said this to a former class, and one Japanese girl spoke up and said, but all the men are interested in is pornography, and I had to say back to her, death is death, and dying is dying, you can have an excuse for it. I mean, hey, I can understand why they wouldn't like a man who's interested in pornography. But still, if they don't change their ways and fast, they're dying. Now, we were taught when I was a kid that we must curb our population. There are too many people. Then in the 1970s, other experts began to say, hey, no, wait, wait. Each person contributes more than he consumes. And if we want to develop a society that explores space and, you know, colonizes Mars, what we need is more people. And we're going to be talking more about this because we're going to come to a man who said that population would increase geometrically and food production would increase arithmetically. And yeah, we know in math know what I'm talking about. And eventually we'd all start with it. But he did not know that somebody would invent the tractor, the combine, the reaper, and better fertilizers. And the result is, fast forward to 2014, and the problem most of us have with food is not that we're not being enough. The problem most of us have with food is we're getting too much. You know, I have to look in the mirror when I say that. It's not a lack. It's too much. And most of us do not look like we're starving to death. For most of the people I see when I'm walking down the streets who are along and looking, the people I see do not look like they're starving to death either. Um, now, I mean, believe me, I'm going to have more to say about population, but I want to say this right now. It is now believed that when a society decides to limit its population, if they really decide from it, the decision is irreversible. Why? Because, and I, hope, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, and if, it's, if you're in this category, it's not your fault. But it's known that only children have a more difficult time developing the social skills necessary to get married and stay married than children who grew up in, who grew up in families. You learn more about social skills from siblings than you do from parents. The sibling can be a member of your sex or the opposite sex. That's not the issue. The issue is learning companionship. And you don't always learn much of that from parents. Now, I'll tell you a little story. I mean, I have three children. And one day I was playing a card game with my six-year-old son. At the time, he was six. I knew he wasn't playing the game right, but it's his dad. Hey, I want to encourage him, and I'm not going to scold him. I'm not going to. So I let him win the game, you know. He started playing the same game with his 10 year old sister, and she didn't have my address. She finally just kicked the car and stomped him. He said, You cheat! Now, which one of us do you think did that boy the most good? Not me. It was his 10 year old sister. I mean, as a daddy, I couldn't just stomp and kick her thumbs. I'm going to say, you cheat and stole my other room. You know, you can't. But a 10-year-old sister, she had no qualms about doing that. Maybe that boy has learned more social skills than he would have learned had he not had his, his two older sisters. I don't know. I mean, I, I suspect so. Uh, all right. Hopefully, I'm making focus. This business of population is going to be coming up throughout the course. So I'm introducing you to it now. All right, anyway, Japanese, no qualms about any form of birth control. Um, women, here's what I want to say about women, the Japanese women throughout history. Because they lived on an island, they felt freer to experiment than uh, people would who, I mean, folk, if the enemy lives just on the other side of the hill, you better watch yourself. Now, if the enemy lives several hundred miles across the ocean, in our country, for the most part, except for Mexico, we, we made peace with Canada, and eventually peace with Mexico. We have not had an enemy within thousands of miles of us. But supposing that just on the other side of Maine would have been Russia. I mean, that close to us. Just across the river, there would have been, uh, you know, some other enemy 
our history would have been much, much, much different. So now, what does that do with Japanese women? Simply this, they were able to experiment. In time of peace, the women became more equal. And then in time of war, they would have to push the women back to subservience again and let the men take charge. All right. Anybody want to have any comments? Here's a lot of you listening. I mean, I've got to say this for you. Here's what your authors are doing. I mean, they spend every chapter talking about the women in that period. And I don't know if they even know what they're saying. They never say this in one place. If you read all, and I have read the entire book, I mean, several versions of it, down in 14. If you read what they say here in this chapter, and what they say in this chapter, and what they say in this, and what they say in that, and put it all together, you eventually come to the conclusion that the more equal the women the more primitive the society was. Yes? Very similar. Again, the, the two influence each other. I mean, Japan's nearest neighbor was China. Yeah, nearest neighbor was China. Um, they influenced each other. Greatly so. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Japan has been compared to Great Britain. Great Britain is an island off the coast of Europe. Japan is a group of four islands off the coast of, uh, of Asia. And again, Great Britain was greatly influenced by what was going on in Europe. At the same time, it was distant enough from Europe to be independent. Japan was even more distant from China than uh, so. But a lot of, uh, they copied each other. Yeah. Um, so instead of the society being more primitive, wouldn't it be more civilized if women were equal? No, I actually the the only times when women were equal were in the societies that we attend to call instead. Your civilized societies always. Folk, if you think I'm uncomfortable with what I'm saying, I really am. But your civilized societies have always kept the women less than equal. They uncivilized made them equal. Um, and they remained uncivilized and primitive. Again, I don't even think your authors realize you're saying it, but they are without meaning to. That's why uh, this primitive society. The women were equal. In that primitive society, I don't want to call out the societies, but there were two societies thinking of where the women were in fact equal. And they were both what we call uncivilized and primitive. Folk oh, said more about this than I wanted to say. <laughs> hey, hey, don't get me wrong. Hey, I like women. I'm married to women. I have two daughters. You know, and I believe women should be treated with courtesy, kindness, and respect. Which group of people seem to do the best? Uh, yeah. Talking about it. To me, it was the Europeans. And I've had girls who say, but Christianity says that. Well, I knew what Christianity said. But it also says we're going to be treated with courtesy, respect, and honor. Anyone, anyone else? I mean, I don't I feel very uncomfortable discussing this. I do. But I guess maybe it has to be said. Again, I don't know if your authors realize it or not. All right, Korea, Vietnam. The only thing what you remember about Korea is they were sandwiched between China and Japan, and they, the book calls a dangerous neighborhood, and they finally, like the Japanese, wanted to lock themselves in and lock foreigners out. They are called, among other things, the Hermit Kingdom, the Isolated Kingdom. Fast forward to the year 2014, and Korea is like it's been down through the ages. It's divided. It's often, most of the time, it's either been divided or ruled by foreigners. Today, Korea is divided. And at least North Korea is heavily influenced by foreigners. Vietnam. I'll uh, tell you what, um, 
We'll stop there. Vietnam was heavily influenced by China, but I'm going to stop here and say this. Nothing about Vietnam will be on the test. 